So I'm sure most of you were aware. I read this story on the podcast a couple episodes ago. Um, the title is Andrew Huberman's Mechanism of Control, the Private and Public Seductions of the World's Biggest Pop Neuroscientist. And essentially what this article from the New Yorker via the publication called The Intelligencer, written by a lady called Kerry Howley, it kind of tried to propose this idea that Huberman was a bad guy because he happened to be a bit of a player. Um, from what I've led to believe, he's actually not even married. I thought he was married or something, but he's not. He's a completely single guy who unfortunately for the women involved was playing the field. Um, according to his article, he was have he had like six girlfriends on the go, or maybe he had one serious girlfriend and six or five other affairs or five other kind of, you know, of stepping out of his relationship whatever it may be called or cheating on the women themselves but it wasn't anything that i would think would be deemed necessary to have this op-ed hit this hit piece kind of put out about him unless he was of course abusing um these women physically whatever it may be i don't think there's any need to really write these kind of articles unless it was again physical abuse harassment or something to be great but again we live in a weird world and cancer culture has gone from there was, I forgot who that comedian was. There was that Asian comedian who got taken down in the early parts of COVID because some girl didn't like the date. It was a very messy, from what I remember of the article, I think it was on a website called Jezebel or something, right? It was a very, it was a very clunky, um, you know, whatever date. It didn't really feel like the greatest time in the world, but I don't think it was a necessary um, platform to cancel the guy or to make him sound like he was a creep or an abuser or something. It was just like a horrible date. And those things happen all the time. You just have to suck it up and kind of move on. And in this case, I think the framing of this article, they're trying to purposely make Andrew Huberman out to be like Andrew Tate or something. It's kind of giving that sort of vibe, right? He's a handsome dude, charming guy. Um, he has like a bunch of women on the go at the same time, kind of giving Tate vibes. Um, he has this kind of lifestyle, this sort of biohacking thing that he's trying to promote, maybe similar with the Andrew Tate's idea a bit about getting out of the matrix. Like it kind of felt that there were little bits of like four similarities between him and Andrew Tate even though I don't think that was the, problem, the case I think they tried to do that so I think that was too heavy handed I think if you want to paint the guy out to be maybe not the most honest guy maybe not the most um, what's that word called maybe not the most congruent because I think that's something that I've also struggled with online like how do you be how do you how do you be congruent when you don't really want to reveal much of yourself anyway like because I feel like for myself when I'm making content and shit it's not really about me it kind of is, but it isn't. It's all about the stuff that I talk about that I find interesting. Other people also find it interesting, but you're just using me as a conduit. I'm sort of like the vessel that brings it, but I'm not really the most important thing. I'm just talking about the thing that you've kind of maybe thought about and I'm saying I'm vocalizing it or maybe the things that I think about you disagree with, but at least you have somebody to kind of go back and forth with it in your head or with your friend group. That's basically it. So it's not really about me. It's about the content. So it's not really the need for me to insert myself in the content, but I'm also somebody that doesn't like to, you know, I'm not into the playing games thing. I can't really be the most, I'm not really good at being deceitful or being able to keep up a facade and shit. So I find it hard to like, you know, have like one face that's for this and one face that's for that. It, it, it's all just the one thing for me. Personally, it's just the, one with the one thing. So if that's the one thing, how do you do that online? You know, while maintaining some level of like privacy or whatever it may be. And it's hard to do that. It really is. And I think in Andrew Huberman's case, being a handsome, good looking, in shape guy that he is, super intelligent, um, you know, you'd imagine pretty successful and made a bunch of money. You're going to be quite desirable to a lot of people out there. And if you're not married and shit and you want to play the field, I don't know, do your shit in it, N knock them down. Um, yeah, Huberman lays down pipe. He's doing the damn thing. Everybody loves it. Well, the ladies do at least, or some do. Well, Here's a development. Joe Rogan earlier today sat down with Andrew Schultz on his podcast, or on, Andrew Schultz came on Joe Rogan's podcast, and he dropped a bit of a massive bomb revelation regarding this whole Andrew Huberman thing because Joe Rogan's close friends with Andrew Huberman. He hasn't really publicly commented on it or anything, but he has a very interesting bit of information here that may kind of shine a light a little bit on what actually happened behind the scenes. So hear this clip and let me know what you think about this conspiracy theory of sorts. What do you think about this conspiracy theory? Do you believe it? Do you buy it? Do you don't buy it? I'm, I'm curious to know what you think regarding Andrew Huberman fucking a bunch of chicks and having them all on the go at one time and that article being a bit of a nonsense hit piece. Hear about what Rogan has to think about it here regarding this information he got directly from Huberman himself. So we're talk talking about Andrew Huberman's situation. His situation, not Huberman. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that was left out of that article 
people know, I assume everybody here knows exactly what happened. So there's an article that Andrew Huberman, an ex, got a hold of a reporter and said that he's a, f a philanderer, he's doing all these terrible things, he's a bad guy. Yeah. And so they write this long article. What they left out was that the person who accused him of all this, first of all, is being investigated by the DOJ for fraud and is in the middle of that right now. It's a very serious case. I would name the case, but that would... Like, they made the lady anonymous, which is also crazy. Like, you could have an anonymous person who attacks this famous person, yeah. with which is essentially, whether it's true, what the things she's saying are true or not true, the stuff she left out, the DOJ oh, stuff. Oh, and that's when he breaks it off. Exactly. He breaks it off. The she DOJ feels contacts him because they're investigating this woman. And you think that that would be like maybe the first paragraph. You would of the think article. that would at least be a part of the article. Yeah. If it was a real piece of news. Yeah. You would say, oh, this is complicated. Yeah. Hmm. They're now alleging that Huberman somehow is under attack from the deep state, which is fucking hilarious. But I wonder if there's some truth in it. If you think about Huberman being this vessel of like information, especially biohacking wise, he's sort of like the evolution of like, you know, Tim Ferriss and some shit to the masses. I think Tim Ferriss was masses, but probably still a bit niche. Huberman has probably out, out, you know, outpaced him of, you know, um, um, what you call it in terms of success and reach and whatever maybe and he does kind of have these protocols which are very accessible very easy to kind of do for most people buying particular vitamins or whatever maybe from fucking amazon and shit so clearly in that respect maybe um the pharmaceutical industry in in, um, in america kind of looks at him as a bit of a threat because he's allowing people information to things that they probably won't have access to because he's a legit scientist on this malarkey and he can maybe have people wean themselves off of their dependencies of like you know of these drugs that these pharmaceutical companies are shelling out there in america so maybe there is some there is something to it but a part of me the cynical side of this is saying to me why would they think huberman is that big of a deal that they would you know have would, they would kind of purposely put him in some sort of honey trap situation because it's not that big of, it's sort of like it's sort of like an idea of like you trying to what's that word called you trying to like make yourself a bigger person than what you are via this contract. I want there's a, probably a word for it where you try to purposely like make yourself look like you're a bigger victim than what you are. In a way, it makes you a bigger part of the story. In a way, it makes you look like a bigger deal. So it's kind of like a weird thing. It's sort of like, hey, I'm admitting that maybe this is why I, this is why they're trying to cancel me. But it also makes me look like a big wig. But then on the other side, it doesn't really explain. If you look at the article, as this, if this is a rebuttal for the article. Then what about the other five girls that he allegedly sold dreams to? What was that all about? Was that a rebound? Did he need to rebound five times and tell lies and create a whole different fable and story and narrative and whatever five different times? Is that, is that believable? I don't think so. But let's continue. Okay, so what do you think it is? Do you think it could come from pharmaceutical companies? I don't think there's zero influence. You know, I mean, I think for sure. Look, with the stuff that happened to me. That's what I was going to ask. What, what do you think it comes from? That was 100% influenced by pharmaceutical drug companies. Political interest too? Yeah. Well, and they're all tied in together yeah. because they fund them. There is a responsibility and probably the governments around the world will never do it. Um, but they do need to apologize for the amount of fear mongering that happened during COVID. I still think COVID was a legit thing. I think people obviously legitimately died many more than probably needed to. I think it did affect people very, very negatively. But for some reason, other people didn't affect them at all. And that was something that a lot of um, governments, a lot of fucking health officials were refusing to acknowledge because they were so scared if they did acknowledge it, because I guess they were aware that human brains, human nowadays have short attention spans, we are easily influenced and led and we don't need much encouraged to do something. I guess maybe in their logical brains, they thought if we acknowledge the fact that some people get COVID and are perfectly fine, it's going to make people think they don't need to get a vaccine. So they just kept ramping up the fear. Hey, have you heard about this person? This, this number of people died in this place. Look at all these open more look at these further there. they're running out places to bury the fucking bodies they're burning them in fucking piles in fucking India people are getting locked in their houses in fucking China to just do the thing they sort of kept ramping up the hysteria to make us all scared so that we could take the va get the vaccine and obviously they, they, they made it incentive based hey if you want to travel the world if you want to go back eat in a restaurant if you want to go back to pubs you have to fucking have the vaccine so I think they purposely kind of fed into the hysteria to do that but I don't like this retconning of COVID Joe's trying to act like it didn't exist, like it wasn't that big of a deal. It was. It wasn't the flu. 
it was a very serious, more lethal version of the flu. But let's not try and act like it was just a flu. It wasn't because people were dying by the hundreds and thousands. Now, some of them maybe misdiagnosed, whatever, called. Cool. There was that period of time where people were fucking, anytime somebody died, they were fucking writing it down as COVID. I understand. But let's be fair. We all know people who actually legitimately died. There's actually a documentary out <clears throat> at the moment. There's this one particular newsreader in the moment. I forgot her name. Actually, let me see it. I think her name, there's this woman. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Guardian TV Review. Guardian, let's see. Guardian TV, it's this woman, right? Who's got, whose husband unfortunately passed away because of COVID. And he died like horribly, like he died like he had like fucking cancer or some shit. He started to like wither away, lost some motor functions and shit. Like it was an awful fucking way to go out. This is the woman, yeah. This woman called Kat Garraway, right? Um, Kat Garraway, Derek Story reveal a rallying cry for the UK's number 10 un son heroes. Um, the final part of a trilogy documentary is about the TV presenter's husband and battle with COVID are honest, right? And so her husband called Derek Garraway, I'm assuming unfortunately died of fucking covid and it was a long drawn out process where he was in you know hospital in and out and shit like here's, here's go right there we go let me see, let me just see on wikipedia and read a bit here for you how he actually passed away um where is it blah blah blah, blah. let's go down personal life where is it have we got anything about the covid thing is it there where is it career radio charity yeah there you go um in September 2005, Caraway married um, Derek Draper. Derek Draper, sorry, in Camden. Draper was a political aide for Labour cabinet minister Peter Mandelson, right? So this is him, right? Derek Draper. Boom, boom. Um, Draper was hospitalised with COVID in the March 2020, and he was admitted in intensive care unit. He was still in critical condition in an induced coma for after two months. So this guy got COVID, right? COVID that people usually recover from, and he was in a coma for two fucking months. Following a month, he had opened his eyes but remained hospital in a serious condition. He was still super. He was hospital after a year later. So this is the most long drawn out COVID death I've seen in a while. This is like beyond long COVID. Draper returned home on a trial basis on April 2021. Following the following month, Garraway gave an update saying that he was still devastated by COVID and immobile. In September 21, she reported that he was still receiving round the clock care and sleeping 20 hours a day. That month, she won a national television award for her ITV documentary, Finding Derek, which chronicled her experience with long COVID and the effects of her on her family. He received treatment in Mexico in February and March 2022. Garraway revealed in March, on April 2022 that Draper was struggling to speak and that he can understand sometimes, do odd words, but can't express himself. Draper required round-the-clock care. In December 2023, he suffered a cardiac arrest admitted to hospital again and was called a very serious condition draper died on the night of 3rd of january 2024 so this guy like went through it coma cardiac arrest like eventually ended up dying like was it three three or four years later after getting the fucking virus so clearly that shit was real so sometimes when these guys talk about covid i feel like they retcon it um i'm not sure if it's on purpose but it's almost like an insult to our intelligence because it obviously was serious it's just that for them it obviously affected them business-wise, career-wise, and they haven't forgiven the CDC or the governments for it, right? For stopping them doing cops, for them stopping them doing stand-up comedy, which is understandable. It's their passion, whatever it may be. But this retconning of COVID is fucking annoying. Yeah. So you got pharmaceutical drug interests that, A, fund the network, yeah. right? They pay for so much of the advertisement, so, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. you now can't just cut to that the advertisers. Off. Yes, yeah, yes, you yes. cut. If, if the news said no more pharmaceutical drugs, like, let's imagine if the government says this. Yeah. The government says no more pharmaceutical drug contributions to super PACs, no more pharmaceutical drugs ads on te television shows and newspapers. Jeez. I think nowadays, especially with how crazy the world is, I think there is no such thing as a conspiracy theory. You just have to find your evidence to kind of back up your claim so i'm open to everything i just think personally there needs to be acknowledgement on both sides governments cdc type of institutions and shit need to come out and say hey we hold our hands up because we purposely misused the threat of covid to get people to comply to get this vaccine because we're afraid the numbers will go crazy high we weren't really prepared for this happening bloody blah 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 we kind of use this to our benefit right just kind of i wouldn't they would never say that of course but 
that was kind of what it felt like. They kind of purposely misused COVID and the kind of hysteria around it to kind of force people to get co vaccines because they weren't sure what else to do, right? You know, have no option on the table, get the vaccine. And obviously it ended up with other side effects, you know, the myocarditis, all this sort of shit. People are getting long effects of COVID and whatever it may be in the future. But I feel like the people on the other side need to also be honest and say, it wasn't just a flu because we've all gotten flus. We haven't heard of, I, I can't name a single time a friend of mine or somebody I've known has gotten the flu and has been hospitalized or has been ill or has been dead, like f f fatally. I can't name it. But with COVID, I can name a ton of people, friends of friends who I've known who unfortunately got COVID and they passed away. Some of them got COVID, didn't even notice and they were completely fine. My little brother's been a good example of it. I don't think even my little brother's got, got the jab. And they're the most messy disgusting unhygienic brats i've seen in my life one of them got it and just was really ill and just kind of stayed at home and that and that was basically it and i don't think he even stayed at home seriously throughout the whole thing but sometimes it affects people badly something doesn't affect our people at all but there needs to be an acknowledgement on both sides that it was legit it was a legit threat and the, probably the, the the our inability as you know as a civilization to deal with it in a mature way or in a kind of balanced nuanced way or in a grown-up way, in a responsible way, says a lot about how useless we'd be if another threat came about that was way more lethal than a COVID. Whether it's nuclear, whether it's whatever, war, whatever, something else happened to kind of threaten our fucking, you know, existence. I think we would be useless to kind of defending ourselves against it because we're all kind of looking out for ourselves. There is no, like, collective... Um, responsibility it doesn't really exist the moment everyone kind of figured out or was like oh these marks are bullshit everyone sort of dumped them when really the masks were never about you they were they were about the collective they were about, they were about everybody else if anything it was like a representation of like i wouldn't say com it was a representation of like not, not compliance of like cooperation but we weren't willing to do it because by that time we all kind of felt like we've been lied to we have felt enough we felt rejected like it was like a mask on our face like a fucking prison i don't know either way it was fucking lame and i hate the retconning let's continue with this clip no more then you have to fill a massive void mm -hmm. that's missing from those ads and you're gonna have to bring in toyota trucks and fucking all these different things yeah but you're missing out on a lot of fucking money so if that's a giant portion of your ad revenue yeah. you're gonna avoid all conversations about vaccine injuries yes they're not yes. going to come up. You are going to shut them down and go to commercial. Yes. You're going to say, well, the studies don't show that. The study, don't, you'll talk over RFK. Yeah. What you're saying is just simply not true. Vaccines are the reason why we don't have blah, 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 blah. Yes. The, the vaccines have never been shown to show uh, to cause autism. Vaccines, and we'll, we'll be right back. Right. Like when people bring up the evidence that maybe that horse tranquilizer medication that he took, right, which was a, an alternative um, way to kind of combat COVID that it might have some side effects or it might not help others the way it helped him. He's not willing to entertain that either. So I think everybody's kind of like dogmatic tribal in their own way, which is really unfortunate really, because it really doesn't matter in that respect. But in general, I feel like this defense of human is interesting because it really doesn't really, it kind of doesn't, it, does, it kind of is a bit, it's kind of as useless as this article. I'm not going to lie. Maybe for some fans of Huberman, you might be disappointed because you felt like he was a Christian man. He was a chill man. He was a honest man, whatever. Right? It might kind of ruin your image of him that way. But what he gets up to in his private life, especially when he's not married, is really not my concern. Even if he was married, I really couldn't give a fuck because his utility is the fact that he's able to bring this type of information when it comes to self actualization biohacking, whatever it may be, um, human optimization. He's been able to bring it to the masses in a very digestible way. Because if you think about it, I don't know if you guys remember Huberman when he first kind of do, was doing the podcast rounds, he was very hard to kind of warm to or understand because he was very analytical, very educated, very kind of intellectual, very kind of school teachery type of vibes he wasn't very warm wasn't very charismatic it took him a moment a time to kind of get used to being in front of a camera and doing that sort of shit so only over time we get to kind of know him to be kind of a nice chill guy but in general he was just there to provide you information do it as you please to kind of help yourself out whether it was from addiction whatever it may be you know health fitness all that sort of stuff he kind of did it lived the walk he kind of walked the walk and talked the talk but the private life shit doesn't matter. And I feel like this other information that we're getting from Rogan regarding Huberman maybe being under attack from the deep state because of all the stuff he's advocating for that might essentially put some of the big pharma companies out of business. It also doesn't do anything to really kind of tell you 
you know, whether or not he's a good guy or not. It really doesn't. It does nothing. I'm not going to lie. They're both as useless as each other. Both articles don't do anything really to kind of dissuade any of the kind of the conversation. It's, it's all kind of a bit of a shame how it's all kind of played out. But in general, um, I still like Huberman. I feel like he played played it really well. He didn't really entertain any of it. Um, he just kind of steamrolled through the cancellation, which I think is a good way to go about it. Especially if you haven't been, if you haven't been accused of anything like grape or anything crazy like assault, the only really way to kind of combat cancel culture is to kind of act like it doesn't exist. I think Lizzo was the one that proved it, even though she's fucking annoying and she's whatever. But Lizzo proved if you just act like it never happened, it doesn't, it won't affect you, especially if it's not something super serious. If it's something super serious, you look like a fucking freak. But if you just keep steamrolling through and keep putting on your content, you'll be fine, especially nowadays. It's not like humans employed by CNN or by like ESPN or something, right? He's got his own podcast. He's got his own Patreon, probably. Maybe his own platform. Maybe his own books, whatever. That's what people kind of know him for. His fans don't care about that sort of shit. They just care about him being a useful person with the information that they feed out and they kind of go from there. So he's perfectly okay. And he kind of just rid it and now he's kind of back to normal. So big up Huberman. Big up Andrew Huberman.